Uh, there's quite a few more than I was expecting when I sat down here. But um, my name's Dean Taylor, and I am the director and founder of the uh, the Phoenix Project Bristol. And as you see from my slide up there, uh, Phoenix is spelt slightly differently. Um, yes, it's because I am dyslexic. That's the one reason. And the second reason was because it started a conversation. People would be coming up to me saying, what's Fink's, fitness, uh, Fink's project? I'd say, ah, well, gotcha. And then I'd reel them in and start telling them about uh, what the project's about. But you guys are all here voluntarily, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit more. Basically, what the Phoenix project is about is uh, three areas. Okay? First of all, helping young underprivileged children, um, aging from anything from 11 up to 25, uh, ex-servicemen, Okay, who are leaving the armed forces and also local businesses within Bristol and South Gloucestershire. Um, going back to start off with, with, with young people. Now, I'm a personal trainer, fitness professional, and I've been working in the school uh, within the last year. And uh, I was amazed at um, how unfit kids were. You know, it was, it, was, it was amazing. I was teaching year 10 and year 11, so around 14 year olds. and. Um, you know, their, their, their fitness level is unbelievable. Well, you'd expect them to be full of energy and bouncing around, and it wasn't the case. Um, so I decided that there's something that needed to be done there and, uh, you know, help them learn sort of more sort of social skills, uh, teach them orienteering, a little bit of climbing, some bits and pieces, get them to do things that they hadn't done before. Um, the other side of it as well, like I said, it was to help ex-servicemen who have just left the armed forces. I'm a former Royal Marine myself. I left uh, a few years ago and uh, I served seven years. And once I left, I ended up working in private security. Not the best job, uh, but it's one of those things that ex-servicemen do. Once they leave the armed forces, with the kind of skill set that you have, you tend to go to what you know best and you all sort of circulate towards each other. And sometimes that just doesn't lead you down the right routes, which for myself is the way that I went. Um, you hear a lot now about post-traumatic stress disorder and different things like this, but there's other side of things as well that, uh, for example, most lads that join up with the forces, they join up at 17, they've never experienced things like paying the bills, going out, doing the shopping themselves, etc. They join up, they learn a whole set of skills there, they leave, and then what happens? You know, you take for granted the simple things of going shopping, buying your, your weekly shop or going paying your electric bill, etc. But for someone who's just learned the armed forces, who's been living in digs on barracks for however many years, or has been out Afghanistan, Sierra Leone, etc., like myself, coming back to civilian life is, is very difficult. And that transitional period, you just need someone there just to guide you a little bit. So the idea of the Phoenix Project is to utilise uh, ex-servicemen and their skills and uh, transfer that across to, to young people, helping them with their communication skills, team building, uh, leadership, and, and sort of get them a little bit more active uh, within the project that we're doing. Recently, we uh, decided to team ourselves up with uh, Kings Meadow Community Flats, which is based up in, uh, in Kingswood. Absolutely brilliant um, charity. They've already got themselves established, and it seems like a, a quite good charity piggyback. So uh, I wheedled my way in there and have delivered most, uh, a couple of programs already. We did a sports day, which was a good fun. And then uh, not so long ago, just a few weeks ago, we, um, we did a three-day residential course where we took a group of 11 to 14-year-olds up to Woodhouse Park quite locally. We did some climbing and uh, abseiling, we did a bit of camping. There's a lot of things that they hadn't done before, such as orienteering, they cooked their own breakfasts, got up early. Um, you know, so it was, it was good. And um, it worked so well that we just held the presentation for, uh, for the parents back a couple of weeks ago, and they enjoyed it so much now that they want to get involved, which leads us into our, our next project at the end of this month. Now... We aim to do something a little bit different and aim for slightly older kids and working our way up now. So in this project, it's going to be over three days, and I'm sure you've all heard of the uh, 40, 48 hours after the film, where the world just turns into disarray, not much different to it is now. Um, but this one's called 48 Hours Before, okay? And this is the 48 hours before 
it leads up to the to the, the main event. Okay. And basically, what happens in that time? Ooh, Ten seconds. Is that um, we're going to teach them first aid, fire awareness, a whole lot of uh, team building activities, and then on the last day, the parents get to join in. Okay. And dress as the zombies and scare the hell out of their kids. Okay. <laughs> what we'd like from you is. For your support, so you've heard so many great projects here today, and it'd be a shame if you didn't volunteer in one way or another, whether it be financial or your, you know, just a little bit of your time. Um, I'd love to speak to anybody who would uh, be interested in any of these things, whether you've got some money, deep pockets, like the guys have mentioned before, but especially if you've got a spare bit of time on the 1st of November and you want to volunteer as a zombie. <laughs> Come on down, it would be great to have you and uh, I'd love to have you join in any way possible. Thanks very much.